Hello world and welcome to a brand new Azure vlog. I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing fine, so it is a race against the time. Every minute a new cyber attack emerges. So we need to protect our environment very, very well. And in this vlog I would like to talk about protecting our servers and workstations using Defender for Endpoint. So Defender for Endpoint is the Microsoft EDR solution that you can help to defend against attackers on your workstations and on your servers, of course. It might be that you are already using Defender for Endpoint. If you have servers, virtual machines running in Azure and you have Defender for Cloud enabled with the standards queue, you are already leveraging uh, Defender for Endpoint. As soon as a server gets onboarded with the standards queue to Defender for uh, Cloud, it will uh, indirectly install Defender for Endpoint on your servers and make sure it is reporting to the Microsoft 365 portal. That's the place where we can manage Defender for Endpoint. So let's grab a very good cup of coffee and after that, I will show you around in Defender for Endpoint. Okay, that was a very nice cup of coffee. So let's talk about Defender for Endpoint for a minute and give you a brief overview of what components are in there and what you can use for. According to the Microsoft documentation, there is core Defender vulnerability management in Defender for Endpoint, which means that it is able to analyze your server or endpoint and find the vulnerabilities that are in there. A vulnerability can be a piece of software with a bug in it that can be used by attackers uh, to exploit. By exploit, I mean use that to enter your environment, gain higher privileges or uh, start malware, for example. There is next generation protection in it. Um, Defender for Endpoint in its core is a endpoint detection and response system, which means that it's able of also uh, detecting threats like uh, ransomware, like malware, viruses, uh, you name it. And when we detect such a, uh, a, a threat, it's capable of automatically blocking the malware, uh, removing it, etc. There is also, for the more advanced attacks, a capability of creating an investigation package. And with that investigation package, we can investigate the threat that we are dealing with and determine what remediation actions are required. We, as analysts, can execute uh, remediation actions automatically 
uh, on our endpoints. It's quite easy to isolate a device, for example. And with isolation, I mean it can't connect anything on the internet except Defender for endpoint. And that's where we can run comments and stuff to investigate uh, uh, the, 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 the endpoint. Last but not least, uh, Defender for Endpoint also allows to uh, be used with Microsoft Threat Experts. Microsoft Threat Experts are actually the first party SOC by Microsoft. So they can analyze uh, your uh, uh, incidents and they also might uh, resolve them for you. So now you have a brief overview of what Defender for Endpoint is. Let's quickly go to the Microsoft uh, 365 security portal and I'll show you how you in the, in the most basic form can deploy Defender for Endpoint on your server or endpoint device. Okay, so here we are in the Microsoft 365 Defender portal. This is the portal where we can configure a couple of defenders, namely Defender for Cloud Apps, Defender for Office, Defender for Identity, and Defender for Endpoint as well. As you can see over here, we have a uh, section called Assets, and here we can see what devices are enrolled in our Defender for Endpoint instance. I have deployed a one virtual machine which is uh, running Windows 11, uh, and it's currently inactive. If we go to the endpoint section over here, this is where we can do all stuff for our endpoints. For example, let's have a look at what uh, vulnerabilities are in there. I have a certain exposure score, which is a score that you can use to see how exposed your environment is. So how many vulnerabilities and stuff are in there that can be used to exploit by an attacker. We can click on that to improve our score and see uh, the things, the, the, the threats, the vulnerabilities that we need to resolve. So I have an old version of Windows 11 running, uh, which might need a patch. And I have an old version of uh, .NET Framework where uh, a new version uh, for is available. So it's very interesting to have this overview and see what kind of vulnerabilities are in your environment so you can fix them. Vulnerabilities are often used by attackers to gain access to your environment or get a higher privileges to uh, laterally move in your environment. So it's very important to resolve them and it's very helpful to have this overview. So let me now show you where you can uh, find the instructions and stuff to onboard a machine into Defender for Endpoint. If we go all the way down, we go to settings. We have endpoints over here. And there is a section over here called device management. And here we have a menu called onboarding. This is where you can find the instructions to onboard your uh, endpoint. As you can see for Windows 10 and Windows 11, it's quite easy. We can download a onboard package, which is actually a, a command that you need to uh, execute and that will onboard our virtual machine. Next up, there is a section where you can test uh, the uh, Defender for Endpoint installation. And we can do that actually by just running a simple PowerShell command, uh, which will trigger an incident or detection in Defender for Endpoint. If we click on this menu over here, you can see it. it's also possible to uh, deploy uh, Defender for Endpoint on Mac OS, on a Linux server, and also iOS and Android. Of course, the other versions of uh, Windows are also there. Uh, but this is the place where you can onboard your uh, devices manually. Manual onboarding is okay, but can be very labor intensive. Imagine you have a Azure environment, which is quite big with a lot of VMs running in there, or 
you have a office with a large amount of endpoint devices. You would like to onboard your devices automatically. In the next section of this video, I will show you how you can onboard your devices using Defender for Cloud for the Azure Virtual Machines, but also through Intune for your endpoint devices. All right, so here we are in the Azure portal. I have already opened Microsoft Defender for Cloud. If it's not displayed in your uh, left menu over here, you can search for Defender in the uh, uh, top search bar over here and that will also give you uh, Defender for Cloud. So with just a few clicks in Defender for Cloud, we are unlocking the powerhouse of real-time protection using Defender for Endpoint. And we can do that by going to Environment Settings, uh, go to our Azure subscription. Let's go to this one, for example. And this is where we can configure actually the protection for our resources. As you can see, there is protection over here for our servers, for app services, databases, storage accounts, containers, key vaults, and so on. If we turn the protection for servers to on and hit the save button over here, that will automatically deploy Defender for Endpoint on all the servers, which are supported by Defender for Endpoint, of course, that reside within our Azure subscription. Also, when you're deploying new servers in your Azure subscription, the Defender for Endpoint uh, configuration is automatically done for you. So they will automatically report to the Microsoft 365 portal when you can see the vulnerabilities and threats that are detected by Defender for Endpoint. Really nice, in my opinion. Okay, so let's now quickly deploy a new virtual machine. So with the power of video editing, this process goes really fast. Okay, so we now have deployed our virtual machine. In the meantime, I waited uh, a couple of minutes, took another coffee break. And uh, let's see uh, what happens in the uh, Microsoft 365 uh, portal. Okay, so I'm here in the Microsoft 365 portal. If I go to devices, you will see our virtual machine popping up uh, here. It doesn't have a risk level and uh, anything else assigned at this moment. And that's because this virtual machine is uh, just deployed. It needs to do a couple of scans to, uh, to get uh, data. But hey, it is uh, automatically deployed in Defender for Endpoint. Just as for your servers and Azure assets, there is also a possibility to automatically onboard your endpoint devices, let's say the laptops that are being used by your uh, users, uh, to Defender for Endpoint. One way of doing so is by using Intune. Intune is a tool that you can use to manage all kind of endpoint devices uh, through cloud and it's part of the Microsoft uh, 365 uh, solution. So if I go to the Microsoft 365 uh, portal, this is where we can manage all our endpoint devices and stuff. But this is also where we can configure the uh, communication uh, or connection to Intune. So if I go all the way down to settings, and I go to endpoints over here. I go to advanced features and I scroll to, I think it was somewhere in the middle. Over here, it's almost at the bottom. We have a Microsoft Intune connection. You need to make sure that this is turned on. If this is turned on, your Microsoft Defender for Endpoint instance is connected to in tune. So as you have enabled this option over here, there is still some work that we need to do in the Intune portal. If I go to this tab over here, I have the Intune portal uh, open. And when I go to 
devices, or actually endpoint security it is. I go to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. We see that our connection is uh, alive. And also we need to make sure that these uh, things over here, connect Android, connect iOS, connect Windows devices, uh, are all set to on. This will make sure that as soon as the device gets onboarded to Intune, the Defender for Endpoint configuration will be deployed to your Endpoint device. So in this video I gave you a brief overview of the capabilities of Defender for Endpoint. We can use it to detect the latest threats and stuff uh, that are up against our environment. Uh, but you also saw how we can proactive uh, make our environment a little bit safer every day by resolving vulnerabilities. I also showed you in this video how you can onboard Defender for Endpoint on your devices and Azure Virtual Machines. You saw how we can use Defender for Cloud to onboard Defender for Endpoint on your servers. And you saw how I used a manual onboarding package to uh, deploy Defender for Endpoint on our virtual machines. But also uh, you saw how I configure Intune to automatically deploy uh, the Defender for Endpoint configuration on all uh, the Intune uh, devices. So this is actually one of the first videos that is about a product of Microsoft that is not within Azure. There is still a relation with the uh, Defender for Cloud connection, but it's actually living outside of, uh, uh, of Azure. And with this channel is getting more and more focused on Microsoft security, I thought it would be nice to also cover the other Defender products which are not uh, in Azure, so Defender for Cloud Apps, Defender for Endpoint, Identity, and so on. So please let me know in the comments what you think should be a great Defender product that I should uh, do a tutorial on in my next video. So that being said, I hope you like this content. If so, please hit the thumbs up button. Of course, subscribe to this channel and I will hope to see you in one of my next videos. Bye!